Hello, Mr. Barton here, and in this video I seek to answer the question, when should I ask a diagnostic question? Now, in my opinion, there are four different points or four different scenarios where you may choose to ask a diagnostic question, and I'm just going to go through them and talk briefly about each one in this video. So, the first one is probably the most obvious, but arguably it is by far the most important at the start of a lesson to assess baseline knowledge. Now, I think this is so important that I'm actually going to record a separate video just on what I mean by, by baseline knowledge, because to me at least, it's not entirely obvious. But at the start of a lesson, you can ask a diagnostic question or a series of diagnostic questions, and that's going to allow you to determine what path you, the rest of the lesson is going to take based on your students' answers. So that's the first one, start of the lesson. The next one, at some point during the lesson. Now I have a little golden rule that I don't like to leave it more than say 15 or 20 minutes without getting a visual picture of my class's levels of understanding of a certain topic. So let's say for example, I was teaching my year sevens, I don't know, solving linear equations. And maybe I've done a starter, maybe we've done some worked examples, and then the kids are just off. They're working through worksheets or solving problems or whatever it may be, all going at different paces and all that kind of stuff. After about 15 minutes, what I like to do is just stop the class, just say, right, just stop what you're doing, just put your pens down, just turn to face me, and I bang up a diagnostic question on the board, get the kids to vote A, B, C, D, we'll, we'll cover that in a later video about actually getting the data in from the kids in a classroom, get the kids to vote, and then I have a visual picture of my class's understanding and maybe everything's fine maybe the kids can just carry on what they're doing or maybe I can identify a specific pocket of students that require specific intervention so I can then sort that out maybe I need to start pairing up kids but whatever I get to a bit more informed about that if I ask a diagnostic question midway through the lesson okay third one again pretty obvious at the end of a lesson to inform what's going to happen the next lesson now, once again, I always like to leave a lesson with a visual image of how my kids have, have understood the particular topic that I've been teaching that lesson. So I'll just ask a diagnostic question at the end, just before the kids leave. And then when I'm driving home at night, I've got that visual image in my head. And then that's going to help me better inform my planning for the next lesson, the next time I see those students. Incidentally, I'm just going to chuck this in the mix whilst I'm here. I'm not personally a fan of asking them a really challenging question at the end. And the reason for this is, for me, that's not really a good assessment of, of the kind of basic skills that have happened that lesson. And also, if the kids get it wrong, they're going to feel pretty crap leaving your room. And I like them to feel good. I want them to feel good about their maths. So I'm more inclined to ask them a kind of more mid-level skills-based question at the end of a lesson. So then they should feel good. And I've got a better idea of whether they've achieved what I wanted them to, not what necessarily I hope them to do if I had some kind of big aspirational hope, if, if that makes sense. So I like to ask them a question based on the core skill that they've been studying that lesson. Hope that makes sense anyway. And finally, homework. Now, there's two ways I like to do this, and I've talked about in a previous video on the benefits of students writing questions together, that I really like to set a homework uh, with for students to create their own diagnostic questions. I think it's one of my favorite types of homework. But also just setting diagnostic questions for homeworks for kids to do, whether that be using the diagnostic questions website, completely free, kids answering on phones, tablets, whatever, and it gets marked for you, or going a bit old school, and cutting out a diagnostic question, get it stuck in the books and say to kids, right, I want you to answer that. I want you to explain your reason. And then maybe I also, I want you to explain why you think each of the wrong answers are there and so on. And if you go um, on my Mr. Barton website, you'll see that I've got a question of the week feature where it's exactly that. Kids answering diagnostic questions on paper, justifying their, their answer, explaining why they think each of the wrong answers are there. And then as an extra twist, what other wrong answer would they put on? put on to that question. So a lovely, um, a lovely way to give homework or assessment. So they're my four times that I personally would ask a diagnostic question. Hope that was useful. Bye-bye.